Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show you how I add a timer to the top right of all of my videos. Uh, I've been editing timers into my videos for a while now, and as a result, uh, lots of you have asked how I do this. So today I'm going to share exactly that. I'm going to show you my method of doing this. It's completely free and it's a very fast and convenient way of adding timers into videos in my opinion. So yeah, without further ado, let's just get started. So the first thing we're going to do is download Shotcut. Uh, it's basically just the editing software that we're going to be using. So all we need to do is just go to shotcut.org slash download. Uh, and from here, uh, Shotcut is available for not only Windows, but also Mac OS and Linux. So all you need to do is just pick whichever operating system you're using uh, and download the installer. And from there, you just have to follow the instructions to install the program to your computer. All right, so now that we have Shotcut up and running, uh, the first thing we're going to do is simply import our footage. So I'm going to go up to the top left, click Open File, and then I'm just going to import the footage. Uh, I'm going to use my 4.03 PR single as an example. Uh, so now that we've imported it, I'm just going to drag it down into the timeline, like so. So now what we're going to do is we're going to crop the footage down just to what we want to keep in our video. So generally what I like to do is I like to keep the part where I say I'm ready, the inspection, the solve, and the reaction. And everything else before that, I like to delete. So I'm just going to skip along the video like this until I find the point where I say that I'm ready. Like so. So I'm just going to click S to split the footage. And then this part right here is what I'm going to delete. So I'll just click backspace. Um, and now I'll just drag the rest of the footage back into the beginning of the video. So now this is the part where we're going to actually add in the timer. So first, I'm just going to click on the footage. Then I'm going to go up here and click filters. I'm going to click plus to add a filter. And then here I'm going to search for timer and click that. So now we have the timer in our video. And now this is the part where you get to have a little bit of freedom to kind of customize how you want the timer to look. Uh, so yeah, you can kind of play around with the size of the timer, you know, like where in the screen you want to put the timer. You can customize the font, the color of the font. Uh, you can put an outline on the text if you want. And yeah, overall, you just play around with all of these settings uh, just to make it look how you like. So the way I format my timer is I start out by just uh, putting the timer up into the top right like this. Uh, and then the font that I like to use, I'm going to click here. Uh, I use what's called uh, DIN 2014 Narrow Light. I click this one right here. Uh, and then usually I add uh, an outline here. So the thickness here, I'm just going to kind of bump it up. I think I usually use around 20-ish. Uh, like that. Uh, and yeah, the next thing I'm going to do is go over here to duration and set it to zero seconds just to start with. Uh, then what I'll do is I'll actually go and kind of scroll over to the right until I see this plus sign right here. And I'm going to click it. So what I'm doing right now is actually creating a preset. So all I'm going to do is just give it a name. Uh, I've called mine cubing and I'm just going to click OK. So saving a preset is very useful because it's a really big time saver because every time I want to add a timer to my video, instead of having to kind of like resize the text and you know change the font and add an outline to the font every single time, I can simply go to preset, choose the preset that I've created and saved as cubing, and it automatically formats it to how I like it. And so that's just a really big time saver and I highly recommend making this preset. Now we're gonna go on over into the actual video. So now that I've formatted my timer and saved the preset, I'm going to find the point in the video where I actually start the timer. So here I'm just going to kind of uh, drag along this gray area right here. I'm just going to drag along the video right around here is when I start the timer. Um, I, I went a little too far ahead, so I'm going to use the arrow keys to kind of go frame by frame. And it looks like right around here is right exactly where my hands have left the timer and the timer is running. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to start delay. And so I'm going to look at what the timer says right now, and it says 8.60. So I'm going to go to start delay and set that to 8.60. And so what that does is it sets the timer to 0, 0.00. And now when I go to the very next frame in the video, you can see that the timer is up and running. So yeah, I can even play the video and you can see that the timer is running smoothly. Shotcut usually has a little bit of lag, so it looks like it's going a little bit slower than seconds. Uh, but when you actually export the video, it's totally fine. The next thing I'm going to do is actually stop the timer. 
So I'm going to go over here to duration, and I know that the time was 4.03, so I'll just set the duration to 4.03 seconds. Uh, and now, as you can see, um, when I stop the timer, it stops at 4.03, and it stays here for the rest of the video, uh, which is great. Once I'm happy with my video and timer, I'm just going to go up here to File, go to Export, and then Video, and then I'll just click Export File, and that saves the video to my computer. And just as an extra bonus tip, uh, if I wanted to edit, you know, solves that went over a minute, like for example, big cubes, I can go over here to format and change it to this one right here, um, the one that says mm colon ss dot ss. And so what this does is that once the timer goes over a minute, instead of counting seconds like 60, 61, 62, it'll count like 1, 101, 102, uh, just like an actual stack map. So yeah. So yeah, that's all I have for this video. Uh, I'm not really an expert at making tutorials like this, so if there's anything that I explained unclearly at all, then please leave a comment and I'll make sure to respond to it. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching.